So the, the final speaker for the session is, is Keely Kay. Now, Keely gave me a bit of a challenge. So um, she said, oh, how do I pronounce my last name? Okay, um, Kovacevic, how'd I go? Beautiful. Okay, so Keely's the, um, going to give us an MLA uh, adoption update. So Keely is the, is the National Adoption Manager for Genetics. And so take it away, Keely. Hello everyone, it's so great to be here and I'm very aware that I'm standing between you and afternoon tea, so um, we're going to keep it short and sweet, just like I hope the tarts will be outside, that was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> so today I just want to run through really quickly um, a little bit of an overview around the adoption extension program, um, then have a look at some of the genetic programs we have running, and then finally just look at how we pull it all together to really uh, create that learning pathway from our awareness events through to that long-term practice change on farm. So in 2015, um, Hamish mentioned this earlier, but in 2015 we had uh, a survey which was called the IPSOS survey or the Genetic Insights Survey. And basically what came from this survey was the idea that there were barriers to adoption um, that were being formed because people found uh, that there was no demonstrated value or there was no real demand to grow genetic tools and technologies. There wasn't a clear pathway to learning. The language and the tools that were being used weren't simple enough for everyone to, to use. And there was no real um, alignment between our R&D and our adoption uh, pathways. So as part of the genetic adoption strategy, we've aimed to um, address all of these issues and to really uh, create a program that from the from the, the first awareness events through to the on-farm practice change, uh, we are demonstrating value. We're providing that pathway to learning. We're, sim we're using simplified language and tools, and we are really aligning our adoption and our R&D, as Mick and Peter both mentioned earlier. Now, you've also seen this slide today, and I'm not sure if I stole it from Mick, Mick stole it from uh, me, or we both stole it from someone else, um, but it is, it is a fan favorite. So essentially, our adoption pathway goes through three stepping stones. We start with our awareness activities, and these are our, our one-day um, awareness workshops or something like today. We then go on to our short-term training programs. These training programs are one to three days, and they're essentially our, uh, you know, our edge network, our business edge, or our bread well fed well, which, have, which is our, um, our flagship genetics program. And then we go on to our long-term practice change programs. These are the programs that have uh, producer buy-in, they're small groups, they're facilitated by a uh, trusted consultant or advisor, and um, they really show the change on farm. Underpinning all of this is our investment in our advisor sector. So through programs such as Livestock Advisor Updates and Livestock Advisor Essentials, we're, we're looking at actually upskilling the, um, the advisors and the facilitators that we have so that we can actually hit the ground running in delivering some of these programs. As well um, as through programs like Breadwell Fedwell, Profitable Grazing Systems and Producer Demonstration Sites, we are forming those skills that are needed um, to make sure that we do affect that change on farm. So going into what actual adoption programs we have that focus on genetics, we'll jump first into our awareness program, which is the genetics marketing campaign. Now, I hope you've all seen this. I think a few of you in the room are actually featured in it. Um, but essentially, this is a, a, a website that went live in um, 2019. And it was, um, it was launched in, in conjunction with a great marketing campaign through our comms team. So it was a really good collaboration across all, all parts of MLA. Uh, but in this, it includes like, simple language. It has uh, e-learnings. Um, there are case studies and there are video case studies and it's been very, um, very popular since its launch with over 10,000 video views and in excess of 15,000 unique vid um, visitors to the site. So that's, uh, you know, an extra 15,000 people who are now learning about the use of EBVs and ASBVs across the Australian industry. Um, in addition to, the, to this campaign, we did run a insights report on it uh, following or in 2020, which is where we saw the, um, the increase from 18% to 48% and 15% to 44% in the use of EBVs and ASBVs across the country. So it's been really, really 
positive, um, and we're really looking forward to seeing what the next step is going to be when that follow-up survey happens um, this year. So this marketing campaign is not done yet. Uh, we do have three new videos that are coming out for it this year, um, and we will be running another push uh, through our marketing and comms team uh, to really promote this and to make sure people do understand that genetics is not something that you just do once, it's something we should keep thinking about, um, and it is it should be front of mind for all producers and uh, people who provide advisor support. Now, on to Breadwell Fedwell, and this one is very exciting. So, Breadwell Fedwell is our... Uh, actually, hands up, who hasn't heard of Breadwell Fedwell? Oh, that's beautiful. We love that. Essentially, it's you know, our one-day workshop which looks at how we, we breed genetics and, we, and use nutrition to get the best out of our animals. And this year, we are um, in the process of redeveloping it. So the sheep workshop was created in 2011, and the beef workshop was developed in 2015. And so in 2020, you decided to go out for tender, um, and we've been redeveloping it through 21 and 22. Tomorrow, um, we will be getting a world-first look at what the new Breadwell Fedwell is going to look like um, in one of our concurrent sessions in the afternoon from Karis and Chris, which is going to be really exciting. The new Breadwell Fedwell program will be piloted from June in 22, and we will be looking, um, it, will be, it will be for, um, for both sheep and then temperate and for tropical um, cattle breeds. There's also going to be the opportunity here for people to be trained as a deliverer, so please look out for um, any information around that or how to get your, yourselves or members of the community involved in hosting or attending an event. Onto the second short workshop program, we have our new e-learning platform called The Toolbox. The Toolbox was launched early last year, um, and since then it has grown to have 23 training packages that are currently live. This is a free resource for both producers and for advisors or other people in the industry. And we have four, um, four workshop, or four training packages, sorry, on there currently that are focused around genetics. So we've got an introduction to mate cell, an introduction to sheep genetics, how to shop for a high-performing ram, and how to shop for a high-performing bull. So that's a QR code in case anyone would like to visit the site. It's very easy to use, um, but if you have any ideas for what you would like to see on there or what you think could be appropriate, please reach out, let me know. We're always, well, we're always looking for more opportunities to include, to increase the offering. So on to our long-term practice change programs. We have two that are our flagship programs, the first being profitable grazing systems. This is fondly known as PGS, and essentially it is uh, small group learning packages that range from six months to 18 months, and that walk producers through um, a certain set of, of uh, course criteria and helps them take the risk out of making change on farm. Uh, during 20, ooh, 2020, we ran a... Um, an impact assessment, and we found that this program actually delivered $17.47 per hectare for each of the producers that took part in it. So it's really worthwhile producers taking part in a program like this, because we are seeing some fantastic returns on farm. The genetics uh, program I have on there is called Building Better Breeders, and this is a, um, a package that was delivered by Alistair, uh, Alistair uh, Rayner, sorry, and Al Hamilton, the two owls, uh, and this is a cattle-focused PGS package in the south. Uh, it's got integrated PGS components, and it looks it, it takes animals from um, selection through to joining, uh, looks at the nutrition requirements, and then on to weaning. So it's a um, I think it's a 12-month package, um, and we've trained over 50 livestock advisors in delivering this package, and so we're really looking forward to seeing some of these groups um, beginning. And, uh, and see what kind of impact it's going to have on the industry. Our second long-term practice change program is the producer demonstration sites. Now, PDS sites have been running for well over 20 years, but uh, in the last five years, they've really had a streamlined um, strategy review, and they've become... Um, well, we've, we've started having an annual call for them. So what PDS sites are is, is local projects that are demonstrating the impact of research outcomes in practice. So essentially, they're three to six year pro projects. We get up to $25,000 per year if you're looking for a levy project, or up to $50,000 per year if it's an MDC project, which is our co-contributor projects. 
we look for a core group of producers of, of 10 plus, and we want to have at least four sites. So one of the projects that we have ongoing at the moment um, in the uh, genetic space is Girl Power, which looks at uh, prioritising heifer performance in northern herds. So this project is hoping to increase the best, best practice management um, of, of heifers in northern industry. And uh, some of the genetic components are looking at the genetic selection for bulls to reduce dystochia, um, as well as a few other areas there. It's running, it runs for three years, and it's running in three sites across western Queensland. So we're look, really looking forward to seeing what the outcome of that project is going to be. But that is just one of about six genetics projects that are currently running. And there is a great opportunity at the moment for more genetic-focused producer demonstration sites. So the terms of reference for this year's PDSs have just been released, and within that there are two areas that have genetic components specifically called out. And that is looking at cattle reproductive performance and also looking at carcass performance and eating quality outcomes. So we've already heard quite a bit today about um, how we can utilise the genetics of, or how MLA is investing in genetics for um, carcass performance and also for reproductive performance. So this is about how do we... Um, how do we put that on farm, and how do we really show that this works across different regions? The full term of reference for these are available at mla.com.au forward slash PDS, and the um, applications are open now, and they do close May 13th. So if you would like more information, please reach out, and I'm more than happy to, to talk you through anything or, um, or put you in touch with someone who might even know more than me. So how we put it all together is we'll look at our awareness our awareness activities, which is something like our genetics hub or a form and forum today. And from there, people might get an interest sparked and they would sign up for a short workshop, like Breadwell Fedwell, or they'll go onto our, our online, um, onto the toolbox. From there, you'll sign up for something such as breeding, building better breeders, or you'll join a group and go into a PDS. From there, we really do see the change on farm, and that's where we see that productivity and that profit increase. Um, and we really see the benefits that genetics can bring. So what's next in the adoption space? Well, like I mentioned, we are going to be doing a follow-up on that 2015 survey. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the outcomes of those are going to be. Um, as the last two iterations showed, um, an increase from 18% to 48% use of EBVs and 15% to 44% use of, of um, ASBVs. So we're hoping that that's going to increase even more, <laughs> and we'll have great news for the industry. And then finally, we are also going to be updating genetic resources to make sure that everything is in line with all the great um, information that's coming through our research pipeline. So that's me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gilly. So wonderful bringing us back on much closer to time. Thank you. I speak very fast. Um, so <laughs> what type of services do the advisors you work with offer? Yeah, good question. Uh, so. Um, when we say a livestock advisor, we essentially mean anyone from um, a private consultant to someone in the public, um, public sector, uh, to an agronomist, to someone who's working as a stock agent or in merchandising. Um, it's essentially anyone that offers advice to a producer. Okay, so um, how do people get, um, how do you get input from um, stakeholders around the key content that you deliver as part of your adoption processes? Yeah, so for something like PDS, uh, where we've got our terms of reference that are created, um, that comes through our regional consultation model. So we've got three, uh, three councils across the country. We've got Salrac in the, in the south, Walrac in the west, and Nabrac in the north. Um, and these uh, all put in what their priorities are for, um, for issues in their region. And from there, they're whittled down and created a list that's the national list. Um, for something like uh, our meetups, our beef ups, or um, even Breadwell Fedwell and the, and the review happening there, uh, we put a call out for people to join a, a subcommittee or a, a committee, a work, working group. Um, and then we work together and, um, and yeah, just ensure that um, all their expertise really get fed into, into, what, into creating the best content for the people that's you know, going to be appropriate for the region. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. No that was really nice to learn about the adoption space. Thank you. So that, that brings this session to a close. So thank you very much to all the speakers. It's been a really informative um, set of uh, presentations. And please feel free to continue our discussions um, over afternoon tea.